Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. So let's say you're out shopping for a new Mac and you're on the Apple site. Now you've got a bunch of options to choose from when it comes to storage. All of these have increments of $200, which seems pretty pricey when you start looking around at what high performing SSDs cost. There are portable or external drives that you can either buy or build yourself for much cheaper. But not only that, once you've chosen an internal drive for a lot of these Macs, that's it. Uh, they're part of the machine, they're integrated into it, and they're not serviceable or removable. And that presents a problem of its own. Uh, for anyone that's owned SSDs over long periods of time, you may know that these don't last forever. Eventually, they will stop working after a certain amount of data has passed through them. Now, over the years, that point of failure and the longevity of SSDs has increased quite a bit. Now, most people may not ever experience failure, but not having serviceable storage may still make some people uneasy. I know some folks buy the highest performing machines available and want them to last for 10 years. And with the newest M1 chips, it may be some cause for concern. With the introduction of Apple Silicon, we've seen some problems with the SSD transferring a lot more data through swapping virtual memory to the internal storage. There were tons of issues with this a year or so ago, when it'd be writing an enormous amount of data to your SSD. And since it's gotten a lot better through updates, but some people do still have concerns with this. There are some workarounds for actually disabling virtual memory swapping, but another thing that you can do is move a lot of your stuff over to another drive to kind of offload at least some of that work. Not only that, but there are quite a few advantages to having a portable SSD. They're a lot cheaper. If you're mobile or switching between machines, it's easier to move your working files from one machine to another, and you can get incredibly fast transfer speeds on them. Like, I'm talking just as fast as the internal drive. But there are a lot of things that you need to be aware of if you're shopping for external drives. So my goal here is to really best inform you so that you can make the right choice if you're looking to pick one of these up, just so you don't get burned or get something that's not going to work for you. And I also want to go through formatting and setting one of them up properly. There's really two ways that you can go for external drives. You can buy a ready-made portable drive that's just plug and play, or you can build your own by buying an enclosure and an NVMe drive yourself. Uh, until recently, I've just been using a portable SanDisk Extreme Pro USB 3.2 Gen 2 SSD. Woo, that's a lot of words. Which has worked really well for me with heavy usage. These are super affordable drives and they are pretty quick as well. They support 10 gigabits per second transfer speeds, and I believe they list it as possibly going up to 1050 megabytes per second, but that really is in ideal conditions. Realistically, you're looking more like seven or 800 megabytes per second or so. That's still good enough that you can edit a 4K timeline off of one of these things and probably run some games. Although I'm not really sure how many Mac users are going to be doing that. Uh, it's still not going to be as fast as the internal drive, but it is still very usable. The thing that you do have to watch out for with these drives is being really careful which brand you're buying. Uh, I used a Crucial X8 portable SSD for quite a while, and I found it started getting really hot and doing some strange things. And I think a lot of those issues stem from these companies manufacturing these as more of a casual storage option. If your drive is in constant use, it's best to stick with a really well-known proven brand like SanDisk or Samsung. Just another brief note here, if you're on a Mac, chances are that your device will not support USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, which is just another iteration of USB 3. Uh, the key difference being that it supports 20 gigabits per second transfer speeds. You'll see versions of the SanDisk drives that are Gen 2x2, uh, they're probably going to be a little bit more expensive, but if you plug them into most Macs, you're only going to get regular USB 3.2 speeds, so just something to be aware of. The next real step up in performance would be looking at something like a Thunderbolt portable SSD, which does get a lot more expensive, and you do have fewer options there. Uh, still a totally valid route to go, but another option, and to me a little bit more interesting, is buying something like this, which is an SSD enclosure, which allows you to throw an NVMe drive into this little case, 
and it turns into a portable drive. Now, you can get these enclosures that support USB 3.2, Thunderbolt, and USB 4, all with varying price points. The enclosure that I bought after a bunch of research was the Acasis USB 4.0 enclosure, which sells for about $140. Uh, by the way, I'll link all this stuff in the description if you're interested in any of it. But the Acasis enclosure, from what I can tell, was the most preferred one out of everything that I've seen. And to be fair, the speeds that I get from this thing are outrageous. This is pretty much on par with my internal SSD. I'm getting like 2700 megabytes per second transfer speeds. And doing anything with this, I literally can't tell the difference if I'm running off this drive or the internal storage. Now, getting those speeds though is a whole other story. You might think that you'd be able to just pop in an NVMe drive and just go to town with this, but that's totally not the case. Uh, if you go look on the Amazon listing for this enclosure, you'll see that some drives aren't supported as well as others, and they can produce varying speeds. There are a lot of forum posts on this topic as well, with people trying out a bunch of different options, but the drive that most folks seem to have the best results with is the Western Digital SN750. I actually had a hard time finding that specific model. So I went with the SN770, which I'm pretty sure is just the next iteration of the SN750, and it works really well. It's super easy to install and set up on your Mac, which is the next thing that I want to touch on, both for the drive in this enclosure and portable SSDs. When you first install your drive and pop it into your computer, you might find that you get a message that the disk isn't readable by this computer, which is totally normal. Uh, you just need to format the drive, and you do have a few options there. If you head over to Disk Utility, you can see your drive there. And in my case, it's already formatted, but you'll see something very similar here. And all you need to do is click Erase, and you'll have a bunch of options that you can choose from in this next screen. You can obviously name this whatever you want. And under Format, you'll have a bunch of options to choose from. Uh, the two that you really want to take note of here are the APFS and XFAT options. If you're just using this on a Mac or between Macs, your best bet here is going to be APFS. Uh, APFS was designed specifically for SSDs, and it does a lot of things better than the other formats here, uh, just in terms of it being faster and it is more reliable. There's a macOS journaled option in there as well, but I really wouldn't use that unless you're running a spinning hard drive or you're planning on using this for time machine backups. XFAT is the only other option that I'd probably consider, but only in a specific use case. With APFS, it won't work with Windows, and the nice thing about XFAT is it does work with both macOS and Windows. Uh, the downside being if you have some kind of failure, let's say your power goes out while you're doing something on this drive, or you have a faulty cord, or it gets yanked out, there is a much higher likelihood of corrupting the drive because it's not journaled at all. There can also be some issues now and then when you're using an XFAT drive between operating systems, so just be aware that while it is usable, it may not be your best option. A lot of times when you buy these ready-made portable drives, they will come formatted with XFAT, uh, but you can switch them over to APFS just as easily. Once you've got everything formatted, it's super easy to start moving over files and working directories, and it's also very simple to move over applications as well. I can head over to my applications folder on my internal drive and just start dragging apps from there over to my external drive, and in most cases those are going to run without any issues. I find that they start up way faster off this USB 4 drive as well, so that's an added bonus, and I'm not cluttering up that 256 gig internal drive. And speaking of clutter, there is one final thing that I want to mention here. A lot of times when you're getting rid of things from a drive or from your machine in general, it can be pretty clunky, and you don't necessarily know if you're removing everything off of your computer or not. I know personally once that I've been using my machine for a long time, I have files all over the place left over from previous app installs, and I get to the point where I just wipe my computer and start fresh. One app that has really helped me out with this is Clean My Mac X. Uh, I'm always quite skeptical when it comes to these types of apps, but I do know a lot of folks in the tech space who are using Clean My Mac and I decided to give it a whirl, and I was super impressed with it. It allows you to clean up disk space, remove any unwanted apps, 
and also find any malware through their malware removal module. It's just a really great little hub for managing your storage. I recently used this to clean out a bunch of old files like a leftover Parallels install that I was testing out on my M1. I just deleted Parallels and I found all this junk left over. And this app really helped me clean that up along with a bunch of other old unused stuff. And I also found some malware too, which was really nice to get rid of. Full disclosure, I actually reached out to MacPaw who builds this software to see if we could collaborate on a video. I've been using this product before I ever contacted them. I'm never gonna put something like this on the channel or promote something that I don't personally believe in. So if you are at all curious about this software or you do wanna grab a copy yourself, there is a link in the description. It's super useful for anything related to managing your storage and taking care of nasty things like malware. I know that there's probably a lot to unpack and process here, but I hope this was informative and you found it useful. My main goal here was just to give you some info in hopes that it does provide you with some value, make you a little bit more comfortable navigating through things like storage. If you have any questions about any of the stuff that I talked about in this video, please leave a comment down below. Or if you just want to share your favorite pet names, that's okay too. Uh, please hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you feel like we may have been siblings in a past life. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next upload.